Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers with plenty of stuff in between, including books. And this is a book themed video. It is a reading vlog and it's actually the first reading vlog of a series of vlogs that I'll be doing on my channel from now on. They're called copycat reading vlogs where I will be reading some of the favorite books from my favorite authors and my favorite booktubers. So will my favorites and I have any favorite books in common we will have to see but this first one I'm doing is about a specific author I'm going to be reading some of his favorite books so we'll go to the short intro when we come back I'll tell you just a little bit about it and then after that we'll get into the vlog Welcome back, guys. I am so pumped about this vlog. All right, so copycat reading vlog. The idea behind it, as I said in the intro, is essentially I read three favorite books, at least, from one of my favorite authors or from one of my favorite booktubers. Very simple concept. Lots of people do these types of vlogs. They're like taste test, essentially, reading vlogs. This is very similar. For my first one, I wanted to read favorite books from one of my very favorite authors, and that is Mark Morris. If you guys don't know who Mark Morris is, he is a super underrated, awesome, freaking horror author, but he writes other things as well sometimes. He's even edited short story collections, and he's actually got a new book coming out soon later this year, so stay tuned for more deets on that. But... I wanted to also include reading one of his books that I have not yet read in this vlog too. So not only will I be reading three books that he has loved, but I also will be reading one book that he has written that I have not yet read. So four books total will be read in this vlog. He gave me a long list of his favorite books, a long enough list where I could actually do multiple vlogs just on reading his favorite books because he gave me so many options but the three books that i chose to read for this vlog are dun, 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 the wind up bird chronicle the books of blood volume one and finally the ceremonies by ted klein and the book i'll be reading by mark morris is the ugly man it's a short novella so it's not a chunker a lot of his books are old school and hard to find unfortunately but i do urge you to check out his work, especially his more recent work that is a little bit more readily available, but some favorite books from him that I have read include Toadie and Stitch. I loved both of those books. They're both five stars. They're both top 10 books from the year that I read them. So Toadie was a top 10 of mine from 2022 and Stitch was a top 10 book from last year. So I love both of those books very much. All right, I have set the stage for this vlog. So without further ado, let us go and check in with vlog Kelsey. So it's still me, but it's vlogging me. <laughs> so let's see what vlogging me has been up to. clip in the Mark Morris themed copycat reading vlog and I am so jazzed. Today is February 12th. It's a Monday. I started reading for this vlog yesterday the 11th and I'm super super stoked at the progress that I've made so far. So when I initially thought of doing this I asked Mark Morris a list of his favorite books and he gave me a huge list. In fact it was so big that I could have made two pages, but I'll show you. I have one page of his favorites in my journal. Where is it? So Mark Morris, that's one page. I have the other page, I just didn't print it out. So the first book I started yesterday was The Wind Up Bird Chronicles, and this one is wild. First 20%, I didn't know how to feel. Some of it was weird in a cool way, some of it was weird in a confusing way, and some of it was kind of mundane. And 
I was like, is this boring? Do I like this? I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Essentially, we're following this guy, and it seems like his marriage is having some trouble. He's getting weird phone calls, not only from this woman who kind of is initiating phone sex with him, but also from this woman who is trying to help the wife and him find their lost cat. The cat's named after his brother-in-law, so basically his wife's brother, and the brother is weird too. So we get all these tidbits and we get all these bits of information about his wife, his wife's family, him. Also, he befriends this older man and the older man starts to tell him experiences that he had back fighting in the war. And it's crazy. It's nuts. There's a scene. Oh my God. There's like a, a torture scene in terms of dealing with the war. It was kind of brutal to read. I was like, whoa, this is not really a horror book, I would say. This is just a fiction book with some super weird elements in it. So at 20%, I was unsure of how to feel. But now I'm like freaking hypnotized and I can't stop reading and I'm actually really intrigued. And there's all these weird mystery elements to it, but at the same time, nothing's going on. It's it's really weird. And at one point, he's like chilling at the bottom of an empty well and he's like, yeah, I just want to be down here. He befriends this weird girl who lives near an alley, kind of a couple of streets over from him. It's like a dead end alley. Anyway, he befriends her. She's like 16 years, years old, but she talks to him in the weirdest way, like, uh, did you know that you're going to bald one day? Your hairline's pretty far up. And do you ever think about death? And blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this is weird. So I don't really know how to explain it besides what I've already said. But now that I'm even further in, I'm about 46% in as of late last night. I'm actually loving it because I can't imagine how this is going to wrap up. And I do think that there's some great philosophical questions that this book makes you think about. So, a lot to digest with this one, but I could see why it's a favorite for Mark Morris, and who knows, it might become a favorite for me. I'm thinking at this point, my feeling is it's going to be at least a four, and we'll see how things develop. I'm almost 50% in, but this is a long book. I think it's about 600 pages or so. Anyway, I am really, really interested to see where this story goes. Today, I am supposed to start buddy reading The Ceremonies with Alex, and that's one of the books I'll be reading for this vlog as well. And I did start last night One Story in the Books of Blood, Volume 1 by Clara Barker. And I only got one story in, which was basically kind of like the introduction story. I do like how that story ties the stories of the whole volume together and the whole collection together. So that was nice. I just... I wanted to read more stories, but the freaking Bird Chronicles book was pulling me in. And like I said, it was like hypnotizing me and it was enthralling. And I was like, I need to go back to reading that. And so I just kept reading that instead of reading more of the Books of Blood volume one. So I will have to make much more progress on the Books of Blood and I'm going to have to make some progress on the ceremonies today. So I might not have an update for the Bird Chronicles for the next couple of days, but only time will tell. So I shall come back and let you guys know what else I've got going on and what other updates I have as time passes.
I am finally back with another update. It's been quite a while. So I have finally finished a book for this vlog. It just so happens that I'm reading a ton of long books for this particular vlog. So long, The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle, long. Volume one of this is not long, but I'm taking my time with it. So everything is taking forever. All right, I do have some updates here, but let's talk about the book I just finished, which was The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle. I don't even know how to put into words what I feel about this book. All I know how to say <laughs> succinctly and sensibly is that I loved it. I don't really, I don't really know why though, because it's very hard to describe this book. I don't think this book would be for everyone. In fact, I think that this book is for a very small group of people because it's just so philosophical. It's just so random. It's like a whole bunch of weird things mixed with a whole bunch of mundane things. Not everything is answered. It just makes you think. So I did scroll through Goodreads and found a review by, his name is Ben, and he gave it five stars. I also am going to give it five stars, but at least Ben is able to convey some things about why he enjoyed it, whereas I'm like, I don't understand why I even like this. Some parts of it I was just mesmerized and wanted to keep reading, like, how is this gonna wrap up? What's gonna happen? And even though not everything was answered, none of that bothered me, honestly. But Ben says, like, kind of further down in his review, he starts just saying, like, random things, almost like how the book is formatted. And he said, nothing in life is 100% knowable, 100% accurate, 100% reliable. Then he says, you scroll down a little bit. I'm never gonna have closure, am I? Backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards, plenty of time, lost track of time, and WTF is time anyway. Also, transcendence, what is reality? All is connected in some grasping, magical, meaningful way. The flow of outside forces can shape your destiny, but even when it's a negative flow, you shouldn't always fight it. And then he says, what? You wanted at least some normal put-together sentences as the review? Fine, a few sentences. This book was wonderfully odd. I loved it. Murakami toys in the subconscious where many unknown but important things brew. He gets you to exist in the imaginative, fun parts of the mind where curiosities, color, and meaning abound. He creates scattered, strange, fragmented, powerful images that end up connecting with just the right timing, creating something indescribable yet satisfying. He manages to meld the unbelievable with the everyday. This is me chiming in. I felt that 100%. He craftily does this so what would typically seem like fantasy takes on real life. He allows us to intuitively grasp the wider ranges in our perceptions. Two quick tips, and I agree with this because I don't think this book, just to reiterate, will work for everyone. He says, don't jump into this book expecting anything linear or expecting everything to match up and make complete sense. Read this as if you're meditating, make it a flowing part of your psyche, recognize the ingenious connections that exist, but don't directly analyze. Put simpler, make it a right brain activity instead of a left brain activity couldn't agree more and that's how I approached this book because right away when I saw that it was weird and I kind of saw it meandering and mixing weird with mundane but also not really being very clear with what it was trying to say I kind of just took a step away I didn't rush with it this took me about a week to read which is a really long time for me especially when I'm using audiobooks this is about a 600 page book so I just took my time with it I sat with parts of it I I really liked it I really I really savored it, honestly, like a good meal. And like I said, even though I savored it and, then, and loved it, I think some people could really hate it as well. In fact, you go through the reviews on Goodreads, there are one stars, there are two stars. People being like, uh, what the hell? Like, what is all, like, what is this? Blah, blah, blah. I just, I don't know. There was something very, very elegant about it and very deep about it, but also very surface level. Like that was what Ben in his review was saying, mixing the mundane with the weird and also with the philosophical, how everything's connected. But sometimes you don't get answers. That's life. Sometimes you don't get answers. That's what the book is like. It's like you don't get the answers all the time. But I can appreciate that in the book. And I appreciate the mystery. And at the core of this book, I can't really even explain what it's about. This guy, Okada, which is funny because one of my favorite wrestlers, his name is Okada, Kazuchika Okada. This guy has a different other name. It's, I forgot his other part of his name, but definitely one part of his name is Okada. And Okada is 
going through all this stuff, I kind of gave you guys a a faint description of, you know, they were looking for their cat. He and his wife were having some problems. Well, his wife does end up leaving him, and then he's, like, trying to figure out why, what's the real root of, you know, of her leaving, what is the true cause. Also, there's a mystery surrounding his brother-in-law. Also, there's these magical realism elements and these, like, supernatural, non-realistic elements of almost like magic, like I said, magical realism, where he is able to do things like he gets a mark on his face at one point and he's like able to affect other people with his mark and it's hard to explain it all sounds ridiculous when i say it out loud but i truly loved it i truly loved it and i am really excited because this is so weird but back when i was trying to be a reader when i wasn't technically like a big reader but you know, I went through these periods of time where I wanted to get into reading, so I would go to Barnes & Noble and just pick up random, like, horror books. And in the horror section, there was a collection of three books. It was 1Q84, which is this author's other book, or one of his other books, and I randomly bought it because I liked, like, the description of the back, and I did start reading it. This is over 10 years ago, and I do remember some parts of it. I didn't get very far because, again, I wasn't really into reading and I was just on a whim going to Barnes and Noble and buying something to try it out. And just because it didn't work for me back then doesn't mean it wouldn't work for me now. In fact, I have a feeling if I would have tried to read this, the Wind Up Bird Chronicle back then, I would have been like, what? And I wouldn't have even gotten very far. But yeah, I would love to go back and try to find my copies of IQ or 1Q84 and actually read it now because I want to read more from this author. I hear a lot of his works are similar to this in that they're all weird but it kind of ties together it's kind of philosophical so really enjoyed in fact let me read you i actually asked mark morris of course mark morris is who this vlog is based around so let me give you some of his thoughts i asked for his thoughts on the books i was reading so he did give me some thoughts and let me just get to it in response to me asking why he liked the Wind Up Bird Chronicles, he said it's beautifully written, very strange, and it had a lot of very different elements and situations that came together to create something very epic and moving. Agree. It was super epic, but also at the same time, like, what happens? But that's the beauty of it, kind of. That's the fascinating part of it is thinking about it, you know, what really happened? What is it trying to say? And afterwards, when I finished, it almost felt kind of melancholy. And there were some times the book I was reading, I would get into this, like, almost, like, hypnotic trance where I just kept reading and listening at the same time. And I would almost fall asleep, not because it was boring me, but it was kind of, like, putting me into this, like, rhythm of reading. And I can't describe it. It was like a dream state. It was really weird. I can't describe it. I've never had an experience like this to where I could not sum up my feelings and that it was just kind of profound, but I don't even know why or how to accurately sum up why I felt that way about it or convey why I have these deep feelings about it. Anyway, five stars, super surprised. This was the book out of the entire vlog that I was the most skeptical of because I just didn't know what to expect. I knew it wasn't pure horror. Having said that though, there are some horrific elements to this book. There is a person who gets like skinned alive and that is very gross and descriptive. And there's some other kind of horrific things along the same lines of the skinning that happens. And I'm like, what the hell? This is not supposed to be like a horror book. In fact, what does Goodreads even classify this as? Fiction, magical realism, Japanese literature, fantasy, contemporary. That's basically the major categories under genres that Goodreads has for the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. And actually, I think this was released as like, three volumes of books, and that's how I bought 1Q84. I don't know if that's how he traditionally writes, is in three volumes, but um, on my Kindle, how I read this, it was like in one big chunk. And quickly, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is a super slow burn. I'm having a good time with this. The dread is slowly building. Alex and I are both liking it. There is this character who's this farmer, Sar. I really hate him, and there might be some problematic stuff in this because he talks about his bad experiences visiting New York and then he talks about like going into this bad neighborhood and like how everyone is 
like bad and it's one type of person over there and blah blah, blah. and I was like what <laughs> but I think it's just the character is bad and you're supposed to dislike him so I am disliking the farmer's character he's very hypocritical even though he claims to be super religious and wants to live like in a righteous way he's He's written kind of hypocritical, I would say, because he does not come off like a good person. He kind of comes off holier than thou. So I'm not liking that guy, but I am liking the story. And we'll see what happens to this farmer dude. I don't think good things are in store for him, but who knows? And then I only have two short stories left for volume one of the Books of Blood. This might end up being, I'm going to predict right now, another five star. I think this could be my favorite short story collection I've ever, ever read. And I'm so excited to see if... My prediction is right because I, I truly can't see anything changing with the last two stories I still think I'm gonna love it and I still think it's gonna be my favorite so I am blown away by this I can't believe I took so long to read it. I've owned this copy this collection of the first three volumes for like 10 or 15 years so it's kind of crazy that I'm just getting to this now when I bought it again it was one of the books I bought when I wasn't a big reader so I'm so glad I'm actually getting to it now I'm using audio but also reading along and I think I'm only gonna do volume one for this vlog just because I have so many big books like this one this one's over 500 pages and I'm only 250 pages in so still quite a bit to go there was a sequence where this guy kind of gets into this trance and he starts walking around the farm at night all naked and he like winds up on the roof it's crazy anyway there's definitely stuff that's gonna happen I think in this rural area this girl's going to visit a guy she just met who's staying with this farmer's family for basically the summertime and just they don't seem to all get along completely well so I think there's going to be stuff with tension I think there's going to be stuff with like supernatural cult-like elements I'm intrigued to see where this is going to go but definitely a slow burn I'm predicting this could be a four four and a half I don't think it'll be a five but we will see <music> Hello, hello, I've got updates. I'm sorry, I'm wearing my Udi. If you guys don't know, the Udi is an awesome company. I am actually going to be sponsored by them. They sent me this and I will have an affiliate link and a code. So I will be doing a more formal ad in a future video, but I am in love. I am in love, it's so cozy. But I do have updates in regards to the books I've been reading for this vlog. I finished two! Alright, so I finished volume one of Books of Blood. Don't be deceived by the length of this. This is a bind up of volume one through three. I only read volume one. So last time I checked in, I only had two more stories left to go. And I am giving the collection a five star because it was just amazing. Some of the best short stories I've ever read, period. Now, every story wasn't perfect for me. In fact, my least favorite story was one of the last two. My least favorite, let me see if they list them here. Hold on. My least favorite was Sex, Death, and Starshine. It was a short story about these people putting on a theater production and about the theater closing and the director of the play was the main 
essentially the main POV and I just did not like him at all. Uh, so that one was not my favorite. However, almost every other story was a five star and I think one other story was like a 4.5 star. So in order of my favorites, I'm not going to give the synopses for these stories. I really don't like doing that for a short story because I feel like it gives too much away. I'd rather people just go in and experience the short story for themselves. But I will give you a ranking in case you have read the stories or one of the stories or a few of the stories you can know what I think about them. All right, so my very favorite story in this volume one collection is the yattering and the jack it was so funny it was darkly humorous i loved it loved it loved it loved it my absolute favorite second favorite the midnight meat train it was a five star story loved it very gritty descriptions of new york old school new york and the subways and a very cool premise awesome ending all right and then i loved the book of blood which was essentially the introductory story and it tied everything together, short, quick, sweet, really well done story. Then I liked Pig Blood Blues, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> that one was really interesting, kind of uh, creepy. And then I liked In the Hills, The Cities. This one at first I was confused. That's why it's not a perfect five star story. This one's like a 4.5 star story for me, but I once they explained what was going on and then I realized you know, what was happening, I was like, oh shit, this is crazy. And the descriptions were awesome, especially towards the end of the story. And then last, as I said, my least favorite story, Sex, Death, and Starshine. To me, that was like a 2.5 star story. I just didn't like the subject matter, but it was still very well written, still amazing imagery, and still beautiful prose. Clive Barker, known for his prose, and rightfully so. So here is what Mark Morris had to say about the Books of Blood. Barker's imagery and vision blew me away when I read these books and had a big influence on my own approach to horror. And I could see that with the way Mark Morris approaches horror imagery in his stories and books. I definitely can see the influence of Clive Barker in general. All right, and I also finished The Ceremonies by T.E.D. Klein. This was the slowest of slow burns. But you know what? I don't mind a good slow burn when especially the ending hits and this ending did hit mostly I, there was one thing I wanted to be a little bit different I've mentioned previously in other clips that I was buddy reading this with Alex the bookubus and it's so funny Alex and I have exactly the same taste because I had a feeling we'd wind up reading this the same and we did I, she isn't told me her complete thoughts. She just sent me a message late last night to say she finished and that she was going to give it a four. I think I'm going to settle on a four as well. And I do think that some parts could have been trimmed down a little bit. And the only reason this isn't perfect, like I really loved when the action started to pick up in the last 100 pages, but I think that he could have made the main character a little bit more likable, a little bit more... I guess, easy to root for. I didn't absolutely love him. His name is Jeremy in, in this book, and he goes to stay with these country folk who live in this small town, uber-religious small town, but there's also this side plot going on with this woman who is influenced and comes to work with this older man, and the older man has sinister things in mind. He's trying to basically kick off the ceremonies and perform these crazy ceremonies, which releases a big bad, apparently, it seems like. So that's the essential gist of the story. Uh, very dark, very occult type of elements going down in the story. I liked it a lot, like I said, but I would have loved to have enjoyed Jeremy as a character a little bit more. Sometimes he irked me. And definitely the character Saar, the farmer that Jeremy goes to stay with, he goes to stay with Saar and his wife. I didn't like Saar at all. I thought he was uber pretentious, very hypocritical, but again, I think he was supposed to be that way. I just thought he was very high and mighty, but he wasn't a good person when it really boiled down to it. So the characters were the biggest issue I had with this book. Otherwise, though, I really did like the imagery. I liked the writing. I thought the prose was elegant and it was overall very enjoyable. However, I would not widely recommend this just because I know not everyone loves a slow burn and I truly think this is one of the slowest slow burns. Again, it doesn't bother me and I know it doesn't bother Alex, but I think it will bother some people. So I wouldn't just go and recommend this to every single person who watches my videos. So just be aware of that. And also, of course, there are some problematic things just because of the age of this book and like, you know, when this was written, uh, the same type of writing is just not done today. So just be aware of that if you do decide to pick it up. But again, I really truly think this is only for a small group of people.
And let's look at what Mark Morris had to say about this one. He said, it's a long, long time since I read this, but I remember being gripped by it despite its length. From what I can recall, it builds very slowly, but with an inexorable sense of dread that never lets up. I don't remember a lot of the specifics of it now, but I remember the flavor of it, and I know it made a huge impression on me at the time. So I think that's great thoughts, especially because it's been a long time since you read it. And he was remembering it pretty accurately. And I do think that the flavor is what you're left with after reading this book, is the the dread that you spend so much time with that it just builds and builds. And then the culmination of everything was very, very intense and exciting, and I liked that a lot. But there's just one little thing missing from the ending for me that I wanted. Otherwise, though, I did like the ending quite a bit. It did ramp up. And I was like, yes! So overall, let's just go over everything. This vlog so far has been a hit. All that I have left to do is to read and rate a book by Mark Morris. Because I don't want to just read some of his favorites. I want to continue reading his work as well. So my last book for this vlog will be The Ugly Men. The Ugly Men, plural. And I do hope to finish this, start and finish this tonight. So I'm excited about this. But so far, everything else in terms of these other books I read were all some of Mark Morse's past favorite books. Books of Blood, I think we're on the same page. He loves it. I'm giving it a five. So successful choice from the list of his favorites for me. Also, he loved this. I pretty much had a great time. It wasn't a super favorite, but still, I think a four star isn't bad. And so I think that was moderately successful too. And my favorite book from this vlog, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, he loves that book. And I was blown away by how much I liked it because it really made me think. And I'm still thinking about it days after. And in fact, I, I looked up Reddit stuff about it where people were giving their theories to what they think certain things in the book meant and I was like I love stuff like this so I have a ball when I can research and like analyze a book but some of it is just not even able to be analyzed and I'm okay with that so total surprise so every single book I picked out from the list of favorites that Mark Morris gave me has been a hit. And this is another copycat vlog that I'm going to do again with Mark Morris's favorites, especially. So I'm excited because he gave me such a long list that I could do this so many more times and just keep picking out three books at a time and keep seeing if our taste match up. I think the only difference is that he seems to be more okay with a slower burn. And I just have made this observation and conclusion because I didn't love Salem's Lot. He loves it. I thought Salem's Lot was a little too slow. And then the payoff for that one wasn't enough for me. So I think he's okay with a slower burn than me even. So I think that might be the only place we differ. But we will see. I will continue to read like him in future vlogs and do more copycat vlogs about him. And we'll see if it continues to match up. So guys, this vlog... It's getting close to the end, but I will come back and check in with you after I'm done with The Ugly Men. with this vlog. This vlog is complete. I started and finished The Ugly Man. It's many hours later, same day as I last checked in. I'm still wearing my badass comfy hoodie. By the way, the hoodie has kindly given me my special code. It is slime and slashers 35. I'll put it up on the screen so you can remember it. And make sure you use my affiliate link. So yes, I do get a part of the proceeds. But if you love my channel and you want to be freaking super cozy in your own hoodie, like me, this is the lazy sloth one, then I would totally use my freaking link and use my code.
please, please, please. It helps me and you get a little something, something in return. But back to the book. I have been cozily reading all evening and I'm so excited that I have completed the vlog and also excited that I completed this book. So this is my fourth book that I've read by Mark Morris, and this one is a little novella, so it's short, quick, and easy. Essentially, our main character loses his father, and shortly thereafter, while he's, you know, he's going through all, all this grief, he's helping his mother with her grief, he gets a phone call from someone he doesn't recognize, like, he doesn't recognize the voice, and he's like yo, you better start watching out. The ugly men are going to come after you. And he's like, the ugly men? What the hell? Anyway, it's a cult story. So we are dealing with a cult. And I just wish I knew a little bit more about the cult, even, you know, at the end of the story. A lot is revealed, but I wanted even more. Grief elements are great in this book that I... I really actually like grief horror quite a bit. So there was some great grief in here that I really did appreciate because I particularly seem to like that in my horror books. So yeah, short, quick, easy. I'm going to settle on a four, which is a very solid rating. I just wanted a little bit more when it came to more about the cult itself. But other than that, very enjoyable. I always have a good time with Mark Morris's books, and I'm so glad I'm continuing to read more by him, and I'm glad that we seem to have very similar reading tastes when it comes to other books, because every book that I chose from the list he gave me was a success for this vlog. Just to wrap it up, out of the favorites that he gave me, the long list, I chose three. I chose The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, The Books of Blood, Volume 1, and I chose The Ceremonies by T.E.D. Klein. And I ended up having freaking two five-star reads in this vlog and two four-star reads if you also count The Ugly Men, which I just finished today. So two fives and two fours. Heck yes, this was a big success. And I cannot wait to read more of Mark Boris's books and more of his favorite books. So I can't can't wait for more. I'm definitely going to be doing more vlogs surrounding him, as I said earlier. And again, thank you so much, Mark Morris, for giving me your thoughts on all the books and giving me your long list of favorites. I really appreciate it. And I'm really honored that you took the time to tell me a list of your favorites to begin with. All right, guys. Well, for this time, that is it for me. Did you read any of these books that I read for this vlog? If so, I want to know about it. Did you like them? Did you give the same rating as me or did you give a different rating? Leave anything you want down in the comments below. If you don't know what to comment, you could always just leave me a stack of books emoji just to tell me that you are here. But as I said, for this time, that is it for me, guys. Till next time, you know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys. Thank you.